Hey guys, a quick vlog about um, mobile app development. According to Gartner, which is one of these big organizations that tracks all these things, apparently something like 20% of companies are going to be, they're going to stop having dedicated mobile apps. So no more dedicated iOS apps, no more dedicated Android apps. They're probably seeing that it's not worth it. As I said in previous vlogs, these days, smartphones are so powerful and their browsers are so powerful that for most apps, with the exception of maybe gaming and so forth, with most apps, you can build uh, web-based interfaces and they're more than, more than powerful enough and fast enough for most companies' uses. That's why when it came, comes to mobile app development, the first thing I say is just to do it via responsive design. For instance, the a new form software that I just installed on uh, Killer Sites, uh, it, they used to have a separate mobile version of the app, not a, not a mobile uh, uh, dedicated app, not a native app, but they had a mobile version now with responsive-based design techniques, which uh, it, it makes it so easy with Twitter Bootstrap and uh, other types of um, UI frameworks for the web stack. It becomes super easy and it's super usable. It's like, you know, if I was looking at that form in terms of whether or not I would want a dedicated iOS app uh, native or dedicated uh, Android app native for a form, it would be, there's literally no point to it because the web UI is super fast and super capable. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, with regards to mobile development. Again, if you're into the a software development game, you're looking for opportunities. Still to this day, especially as a freelancer, the web stack, I think, is the place to go. And of course, for freelancing, I'm a big advocate of PHP, PHP Laravel, or maybe PHP and WordPress development, PHP Drupal, some, one of those big, two big CMSs. Again, I'm not dissing on the other languages, whether it be Ruby or whether it be uh, Java, Ruby, Python, they're all great. They all have their purposes. But for freelance, I think you're going to see and you have to check in your local area, of course. You're going to see there's a lot of work for PHP developers. That said, whether you learn PHP or Python or JavaScript first or Java or C Sharp or, you know, all these languages are Swift, whatever, whatever language you learn, they're so similar that to learn the next language will become so much easier. So it's really not like a dead-end path. It's not like you're, you would be investing in uh, a bad language that doesn't exist these days. It's not possible. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So let's say you decide you want to learn JavaScript and you find out that all the demand in your area is PHP. It's not like, oh no, I wasted my time with JavaScript. You're not because A, JavaScript and PHP share like you know, 80 to 90 percent of the same principles. The code looks different but it's pretty much the same. The hard part about learning how to program is not in understanding what the, not, not writing the code, the hard part is actually understanding the concepts behind the code, things like object-oriented programming, like functions and arrays and, and function arguments and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that kind of thing. So you're never wasting your time regardless of the language that you're learning because anything you learn in one language is almost 100% of it, 100% of it is applicable to another language, so don't worry about that. And that brings me back to my larger message that I talk about all the time. It's the core, it's the core of the programming language that matters, the core concepts, the core techniques, the core uh, capabilities of a language that matters because this is, these are principles, these are uh, ideas, uh, this is the learning, if you will, that's universal, it applies to all languages. That's why I emphasize, learn your core languages first, learn the basic techniques, really understand those, and then you can jump into any specific library or framework afterwards on a need-to-nerd basis, need-to-nerd basis, because when you get out there in the real world as a developer, what you have to do is you sit down, you look at the project, and uh, with a basic awareness of the frameworks that are out there, like jQuery, like uh, Bootstrap, like uh, Laravel, uh, if you're in the PHP world, or uh, Django, if you're in the PHP world, uh, in, in the uh, Python world, et cetera, et cetera. You have your core, then you have a basic knowledge of all these little frameworks that are out there. Some are little, some are big. And then when you look at the project, you'll be able to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to use 
this, I'm use PHP Laravel, makes sense here, and I'm gonna use, uh, we're gonna use jQuery here, or we're gonna use Bootstrap, of course, or we might use React, or we, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing, you know, Ruby, same thing with Python, et cetera. Yep, it's always about the core, it's always about the core. All right, uh, that's it for now, ciao.